2023 brackets coming up and I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Knob Creek won't be a part of it. Oh. We're pulling it. It's going to be a new winner just to see. Cause you're afraid. podcast i am your host danny paul joining me in the bob media studios is the vice host baron of bourbon the shah of socal the liege lord of loath leon coventry ladies and gentlemen <laughs> danny i'm fired up man yeah i got some new, I got, talk to I got me some tell new, me something got some new equipment Ooh. you guys can see me now i'm not i'm not good. in the dark anymore i gotta say you sound good got the good mic got the good boom stand you're well lit it's about Snazzy. time my uh, my equipment backs up how much talent I bring to this show. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, you know, obviously. if you're uh, if you're playing with subpar equipment, you're gonna have a subpar game. So that's good. <laughs> Glad you upgrade. <laughs> we have a special guest tonight, Leon. Do you know who's joining us? Is he back? He's back. The Midge is returning to the show. Hey, where are the white women at? Ah! <laughs> uh, no popular uh, demand or no demand whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with popular uh, demand of no one. Well done. <laughs> Glad to be joining Welcome you, boys. Back, on a Thursday, this is a Thursday, the 23rd of February. We're almost out of February in the year of our Lord, 2023. Can you guys believe that shit? Yeah, I can. It's can. freezing. Oh, no. Someone just entered the Bob Media Studios. Yeah. yeah but no. We would be without oh. him. Mr. Jobs just joined us. Excellent timing, Mr. Jones. Excellent time. I wish it could be for longer. I just wanted to stop in, see your lovely faces, say hello, see the midge down there. Good to see you, gentlemen. You, you know what I'm shocked about? He he showed up literally right at the right time. At and the time. We could hear and see him. That And he could hear us. He's never nailed the trifecta. Usually we got a good five minutes of, nope, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Nope, can't oh, hear you. Garbage. Well, nope. I think you should turn your mic up a little bit, Jay, but you're here. We're glad to have you. That's wonderful because you just got here in time to start the show. Well, it's good to see you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you I for like the warm. Uh, I like intro. it. Levels are good. All right. As Conan would say, got a great show tonight. We're going to throw in some brown news. We've got, uh, we've got our top story. Of course, we're going to go to the crank file. We've got uh, adulting, which is one of our new segments. We got science, technology, space, which is one of our new segments. And if uh, Leon does not have a loathe tonight, we have our new segment, WTF, which is kind of a general purpose loathe. Uh, we've got some good stories coming here for you. But without further ado, what is your brown tonight, boys? Well, uh, tonight I, I went with something a little different. Oh, this is Wilderness Trail. It's mm -hmm. a patch 16 B02 for those that are out there looking. It's a, it's a, it's a hundred proof. They make it in Kentucky, a little bit smaller uh, operation, but it's, uh, it's pretty damn good. This one I would say more is like the d dessert type bourbon. I, I can have one glass of this and it, cause it's almost got like a maple finish to it. Remember that one we were doing in the uh, dessert the blind one. It, yeah. it tastes like a dessert bourbon to me. Okay. Right. It's definitely sweet. So but we're coming up on the, uh, we're coming up on the bracket again. Oh man. We got, I got to get triple B I'm putting together. Some to discuss that. Well, if, if triple B wants to do it again, I mean, she's, she's got her own thing going now, which by the way, shout out friend of the show, triple B. What does she have now? 3,500 followers. She's, she's crushing. <laughs> she's uh, actually going to start ass. doing lives on Saturdays now. So really? She's yeah. She's oh. just, She's just killing it. She was on uh, the other night, I think, with uh, the CEO of, um, I can't remember, one, one of the major distilleries. And uh, they, had a good, they had a good time on there. So, God damn. Good I, for her. Yeah. Yeah. She's, Busty Bourbon she's, Batch at Instagram for all you bobs out there. She's been on the show. She's a friend of the show. All right. Uh, Jay, before you have to take off, what are you drinking tonight? What's your brown? So, I got the uh, George Dickel Sour Mash 8-Year. Oh. I don't. If you guys have can find this, it is exceptional and inexpensive. It's twenty one bucks. Yeah, yeah it's a good little, good little pickup. Yeah. All right, Major, what about you? 
Uh, today I'm enjoying uh, my 12-year Florida Konya. One of the things I discovered in uh, Nicaragua in my travels. And according to the label, it is manufactured from sugarcane, palm fronds, and the tears of Los Angeles-based Nicaraguan nannies. So check out. <laughs> Uh, on that order that's uh <laughs> hyper specific okay <laughs> maybe that's why it's so cheap <laughs> <laughs> the abundance of tears <laughs> oh and we're oh. off to a good start you gotta guys. get enough nannies over the border right you, you can't import that shit that's gotta be local drawn right and then you gotta make sure they're crying when they get there yeah well obviously <laughs> very important all right i am uh, gonna get water i'm trying a new one from uh from the clerk at the store. He tossed me this one. This is called Nine Banded. Okay. Okay. Nine Banded is a wheated bourbon. Wheat, wheated. Since I'm still in my wheated bourbon tour, this one's 90 proof and it's from Austin, Texas. So it hmm. calls itself a bourbon. Apparently it follows the rules, only it's from Lawrence. It's it's from Austin, Texas, and it's distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. New York Aged City. At least two years. The Nine Banded Armadillo is the state mammal of Texas and a symbol of the independent and creative spirit of our home, Austin. Keep Austin weird. How how long is that aged? Did you say? Uh, this is a deuce. Two years. Okay. Yeah. That's... This is bottle number four hundred and sixty nine of six hundred. So it's exclusive. I'm gonna have to hold on. Uh, only two years. I bet two it tastes years. like rocket fuel. Only six hundred <laughs> bottles until the next six hundred bottles. But at least I have four hundred and sixty nine of the private barrel selection. Is it good? I like well, it. What the notes on it? It's uh, it's not very dark. No, it mm. wouldn't have much time to be. Oh. That makes sense. Uh, good question, Jay. Let's see here. <laughs> Limestone filtered water from Texas Hill Country. Mm. Uh, Unique blend of wheat, corn, malted barley. Mm. No flavor profile. What do you think it tastes like? Heaven. Mm. <laughs> Heaven in glass. It's pretty good. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't expensive, it. but I was, I was looking for anything wheated. And the other only option was the, the $600 one behind the glass case. And I was like, well, I'm not ready for that part of my journey yet. Mm. I'm waiting for one of these bullshit posts on Instagram where apparently somebody brought in 83 bottles of Weller to a Costco in Arizona. Air quotes for those of you at home. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I Every time I go into any Costco, I always go back to the booze out just to see if I, I, today is that lottery day. Just kind of mm-hmm. they have something ridiculous like that there. I did run into a, uh, a fellow Bob at uh, Total Wine and I was looking through the glass case and, you know, he could see that I was looking for, you know, is there anything behind that box? There is somebody stashing something. He's like, you know what I hear is good. CVS. I said, yes. You know what else? My man gets his shit at Safeway. And the guy went, really? I said, yeah. <laughs> so a little speakeasy action, you know? You got to talk to your people when you see them in the aisle. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, now that we're done talking about Brown, talk about Brown. How you doing? Whiskey and whiskey. This is the darkest brown you got. Yeah. Say, Holmes, uh, where are they hiding the scotch? What about um, Brown? That's code for bourbon. Great stuff, this bourbon. It comes from a land called Kentucky. Talk about brown. There's a special rung in hell reserved for people who waste good scotch. Scotch? Oh, yes, I, I think so. Can I have one more of these with some booze in it, please? Nice brown news comes to us from Market Watch. This was an interesting one because I had, and this didn't even occur to me, but Americans are now spending more on booze than beer, which... I thought we've had, the, haven't we had this discussion before? I thought, I thought from what I heard in the news, this was like the first time in 80 years or something that, wow. that this is the case. It's always been, uh, beer had always led by, by a pretty decent margin. And for the first time. Always beer. Well, spirits now have a 42.1% sales share of the beverage alcohol market compared with beers, 41.9%. So we're talking about a hair, uh, according to the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, Discus. The article begins, so much for all those beer ads you see on television, when it comes to Americans' drinking preferences, booze has now eclipsed brews. That's very clever. At least in the sales department. That's the finding of new economic study from the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, a leading trade group for the liquor industry. Yeah. The study noted that spirits accounted for 42.1% share compared to 41.9% of beer and wine came in third, 16%. Thanks for coming on. Where are they counting uh, the White Claw and truly category? White Claw is a spirit, isn't it? Mm -mm. I think it's under beer. It's not a spirit because of the bubbles. If they're calling it a beer, I'm surprised by this. If they're calling it a spirit. 
My it can't, I don't know there's no can. way it can be a beer. It doesn't 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 even use any of the same ingredients that beer does, other than water. I'm just saying so, category wise. I feel like that is the real hidden Maybe thing in here. Is that it is. People, like a lot of beer drinkers and, and Vizzy and all those things are pushing the numbers up. They went that they went to that direction. On I would the, classify on the it as because it's basically moonshine with sugar and bubbles, right? Yeah. Like I mean, that's it's super popular everywhere you go now. It's yeah. every it's a whole ball game, now. everything. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a whole section. You, you crack open a truly that's just white dog and carbonated water. I mean, it's. Some of that stuff gets really nasty after you have six of them. You think COVID had anything to do with the, it sounded like it was a slow crawl, but I feel like when COVID happened, everybody just grabbed their bottle and hunkered down. And maybe people kind of got a, got, got a little bit more of a, um, a, a distinct, more of a distinct palate or it, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like the liquor cabinet in most homes started to fill up a little faster than the beer fridge did. COVID. We did. We talked about that pretty extensively in season one. There was a big spike in. Well, I wasn't around in season one, so catch me up. I'm, I'm catching you up. I'm informing you, sir, bringing you to the know. But I think Leon's got a point. I think all these college girls wearing UGG boots and going out cold wearing nothing. They're, they're the ones sucking down the white claws, boosting these numbers up. Yeah. Year after year, oh, the spirit oh, wait, sector wait. has slowly gained market share. Wait, we, I have to say this before my drunk brain forgets it. Have you heard of a refreshing beer? This is, the, I saw one of these videos go by. Of course, beer is refreshing, but I'm actually a thing called refreshing beer. And it's supposedly what golfers are doing. And I am a golfer. So I did this. You get a light beer. Uh, I'm a Coors Light guy. Yep. You, you, that's what you're drinking on the course. And you get the yellow Gatorade. And you go 75% beer, 25% Gatorade. And you drink that. And it's a very nice, refreshing drink while you're you're playing golf. It's fucking awesome. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I'll try it. because It you sounds know, like a shanty. It sounds like a... Um, yeah. It is like mine, a shanty. Mine and Kugel or whatever. But so you're better, like, probably. you're totally like hydrating yourself while you're dehydrating, you're dehydrating yourself. It's oh, you, wonderful. You, you want to tell yourself that, you know what that sounds like mm. to me? That's a salad with a diet mm. Coke and a burger. <laughs> <laughs> I love ordering that. I'll take the double <laughs> burger. If you could dip it in chocolate and then fry it, that would be great. And then the diet that's, Coke. Yeah. That's not even that. That's a rack <laughs> and of some lamb flapjacks. Leave the bun out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching my weight, my carb load. All and the diet coke. coke, please add it. More bacon. Yeah. Could you replace oh, no. the bun with bacon? Coke. I would like a Coke Zero. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, indeed. Back to the story. In 1999, beer ruled the roost with a 56 percent market share versus 28 for spirits. Wow, that's a big boost. Uh, by 2010, beer's share had dropped to 49, while the spirits' share had increased to 33. In dollar terms, the 42.1% spirit share equated to $37 billion with a B. That's an increase of 5% from the 2021 figure of $35 billion. Discus said that its findings are based on data from the Beverage Information Group and Industry Financial Reports. And we can see here that going back to 01, based on this graph, uh, by the way, all, all of you Bobs out there know this, but any new Bobs joining us, welcome. We post the links to the show in the show notes. So you'll get this graph when you see it. It looks like beer has steadily dropped on a linear scale from 01 and booze has increased in the opposite linear scale. And the golden cross was this year. Hmm. And then wine I remains. I think you're right. I, I think they're calling this the uh, white claws spirits. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 that would be it. That would be it. Full beer and I mean, alcohol numbers wine. for wine 2022 are not yet available, but likely incomplete. Generally, alcohol data is notoriously difficult to track. I don't know why. Uh, oh, yeah. So there. So, okay. So one, it might be, it might be white claws, Leon, but a lot of it seems to come from celebrity booze. Okay. So uh, a lot of money Swanger, in there. the industry Definitely professional quoted in the story said that the story is very much about the rise of two particular spirit categories, American whiskey, bourbon, pause for effect, mm -hmm. which was up 10 and a, 10 and a half percent in revenue in the past year alone. And tequila mezcal, which is up 17%. Latter categories become especially hot with celebrities ranging from Dwayne The Rock Johnson to Sammy Hagar promoting tequila and mezcal, including the Breaking Bad Boys. I really like their stuff too. Dude, Sammy's been in the tequila game for over twenty years. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Owen Cabo. I mean, he's mm -hmm. Cabo I mean, yeah. Sammy equals Mexico, right? Um, I, uh, as you've like been talking about going. this, I, I just brought up when did White Claw get popular? It basically launched in 2016, Ooh. and in 2018 is really when it started taking off. So I, I don't know what chart you had up there, but 
given that White Claw seemed to be the yeah, well, there it is. If you want to count this little bump right here under the nineteen, you can see that yeah. there's certainly a trajectory bump. So it's got to be it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of pop and celebrity culture, Swanger said it's worth noting how some television series have helped create buzz for booze and booze categories over the past couple of decades. Uh, he pointed to huh. Sex in the City, which made the vodka-based Cosmo a sensation. Another critical factor, the growing premiumization, pre premiumization of spirits. That is, consumers are willing to trade up and spend more for higher-end brands and offerings. Uh, recently rolled out Weddell line of whiskey, priced at $100 to $200 a bottle. It's gone in two weeks. Robinson it's noted that penny. wine became more popular in the 70s, especially after American wines were judged worthy of global attention in a famed 1976 competition known as the Judgment of Paris. Footnote for a later episode. Uh, then it was beer's turn with the rise of craft beer in the 90s. And now people can't get enough of liquor, especially brown spirits such as bourbon and rye. Fuck yeah. You know, I think, I don't think the craft beer movement helped beer. I think it washed it out. I, 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 I think that people started going, okay, I don't need cranberry nut crunch beer. I just want, you know, beer. And it got a little bit too <laughs> nutty. I think people's flavor Series profiles changed actually, too much actually, considering the beer profiles that were out there. And like you went from a West coast and East coast, you know, all different kind. And I think people's palate just changed and got tired of it. Cause here's your truth. You alluded to it many times. Do you like drinking a big, hoppy beer and having more than three of them. Your yeah, answer no, is zero. Don't Leon an IPA. We've had this discussion multiple yeah, he'll times. He'll go zero, but most people can't drink that many. I think that's yeah. kind of it. It's just not as enjoyable. I miss the days when if you wanted to sell more beer, you made mountains turn blue on the can. You didn't change the flavor. Like, whoa. That shit was genius marketing. Are you shitting me? It's blue. Green how do you, how, hider. <laughs> oh, it's cold. I you, can drink it. How would you know? I have, how do you know? Thank God these mountains are blue. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, get my gloves. It's too cold. I, I want to put a pin in this one and come back to it because I, I think the rise of the seltzer is what put this thing over the edge. Because right now, what I'm seeing is like Athletic Brewing Company and the, you know, you guys remember the Super Bowl commercial with uh, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man with Heineken Zero? Like mm -hmm. it's becoming, uh, beer is becoming non-alcohol beer for the, mm -hmm. the sober curious set. So that might be part of it as well but i think other than other than that it's just like whiskey got interesting again you know we we talk a lot about we can't find blantons we can't find pappy we can't find weller that's because whiskey is sexy again so it's got to have something to do with it and there's a lot of really good stuff coming out that's brand new that you've never seen two year yeah. four year five year free ranch or it's sure. american or sure. i like american or <laughs> all right we're gonna pin judgment of paris i'm gonna look this up we're gonna talk about it later but uh that does anything to do with the brand. french i'm out <laughs> even the french Fuck the French. I swear to God. I'm going to run. I'll catch you guys later. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks little for joining us. All right, Happy everybody. birthday to the little man. Yeah. Gonna go tuck him in. Bye. That wraps up talking about Brown. Let's get to our top story. News team, assemble! Let's get down. Let's get down to business. And I got news for you. Tonight's top story comes to us from raw story. Bald eagles are getting fatal lead poisoning from the most all-American source Imaginal. Bald eagles are turning up dead from lead poisoning all across Michigan for a surprising reason. This is America's bird, people. We're killing America's bird. Well, in all fairness, it is Michigan and nothing, <laughs> nothing good comes from Michigan. Oh, that's the Ohio state in me. It doesn't take much lead to sicken or kill a bald eagle and wildlife rehabilitators say the birds are being poisoned by accidentally ingesting bullets while scavenging carcasses from animals killed by hunters <laughs> using lead. That's the most ammunition. American thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it really is. Fucking America. <laughs> that is America. I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm picturing Joe Dirt in front of a waving American uh. flag. All proud of this fucking story. Fill them full of lead. <laughs> There's so much symbolism here. <laughs> if you've ever seen an eagle that's been poisoned, it's something you'll never forget, said John Bush White's great name. Nutrition and toxicology section chief at Michigan State University Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. The animal may go blind. They can develop tremors. They can lose their ability to fly. It's a sad statement on the truly adverse effects of a chemical like lead on an animal. America's national symbol were removed from the endangered species list after a then controversial federal ban on the pesticide DDT nearly killed off the species, which had dwindled to just 417 nesting pairs in 1963 to more than 300,000 bald eagles currently living in the wild. And conservationists are now sounding the alarm on hunting or fishing with lead 
based products. A study published last year found nearly half of bald and golden eagles nationwide tested positive for chronic lead poisoning. And it's the third leading cause of death for the species in Michigan. And research shows the main source is lead ammunition from wild game carcasses and the entrails hunters leave behind from cleaning game in the field. Alternatives that are safer for people and wildlife do exist. And it makes sense to elevate the conversation and boost public awareness, reads the State Department of National Resources. Here's what I want to say. And we've, I think one of the crank files back in the day, we reported on Australia's beloved animal, the koala, mm-hmm. and how nearly the same numbers you're describing yeah. are dying of chlamydia. <laughs> I'm saying we're fucking winning. This is winning. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is when America is being top dog again. And I'm, I'm fucking proud of it. That's how we do it. We we're developing super eagles is what we're doing. And you, you gotta, you gotta break a few eggs. You gotta break a few eggs. If you're going to make it happen. Technically McDonald Douglas uh, developed the super eagle, but I digress. <laughs> They're going to be spitting bullets soon. And then what are you going to do? I would right? agree with you though, that, that uh, the koala is technically uh, Australia. Is Jeff Spicoli. What about the dango you know that, that ate your baby? Ko- koalas are literally stone 20. I'm sorry. Oh, they're, what a life, dude. They when I die, I want to come back as a koala. A day, they're stoned 24 hours a day because the only thing they eat is eucalyptus leaves, which leaves them high every day. So literally, koala, it's just a, a little teddy bear that's basically smoking the equivalent of Australian ganja 24 hours. It's all it does. And just banging. Let, let the little bastards burn. I know they're yeah. adorable, but if fuck them. Could, they're uh, useless. Let me ask you something. If you could speak koala, you know what they'd say? <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, just for reference. Because I got high. Because I got high. <laughs> I so, was going to climb a tree, but then I got high. Yeah, this I know maybe this story backfired uh, in the way that you originally thought that we would be absorbing this information, but I'm super proud. Way to go, Michigan. You did something right. that was going around Europe. Are you, that are I you got proud sent. of the poisoning, the eagle, or both? Maybe, maybe I missed it. So there was this a is a funny this, meme that was going around that said how Americans eat breakfast. And I got it sent to me for some European colleagues. It was a glass of orange juice, a plate overflowing with bacon. And a pistol. It was like, that's fucking America. And the first thing I sent back to him is, absolutely ridiculous. The gun wouldn't be facing that way. You got to be able to get to it. (laughs) And then I saw another one that said, this is how Europeans think I eat. Absolutely preposterous. And then the next picture was two guns, one on either side of the plate. (laughs) That's America. Oh, well, that's that's awesome. In Michigan, at least. Bald eagles are getting fatal lead poisoning from eating bullets because Mm -hmm. America. (laughs) That's our top story. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's get to the crank file. I could look for something in the crank file. Crank file. Whatever. Tonight's crank file comes to us from our favorites, the New York Post. They find the best shit. Louisiana starts requiring ID for adult sites, calling porn a public health crisis. (coughs) Far as you know... I have so much to say about this one. In an effort to protect minors from accessing online pornography, Louisiana lawmakers have enacted a new law requiring age verification on adult websites. Act number 440, which went into effect on January 1st, will now require residents of the Bayou State to provide proof of their age with a government-issued ID or digital ID card before accessing online pornographic sites. Is that that to post or to act like to to view? view. Oh, okay. Like like rather the other way around. Age gating with verification of adult status. The act states the pornography is a public health crisis for younger viewers, call, citing that it contributes to the hypersexualization of teens and prepubescent children and may lead to low self esteem, body image disorders, and increase in problematic sexual activity. 
at younger ages and increased desire among adolescents to engage in risky sexual behavior, which is very interesting to me because doesn't Louisiana, the home to New Orleans, which at the moment yeah. is celebrating Mardi Gras and was it to say last week? Yeah. Body image disorders and problematic sexual activity. Of all the problems that Louisiana has, kids watching porn online is way at the bottom of that list. Yeah, kids well, don't watch. Way at the bottom. Well, can I step up in defense of Louisiana here? Oh. Uh, I oh, know that this is because I want not... pop holes in your, in your defense. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me give you. Let me give you a, a proper okay. intro. So, Leon, <laughs> you were saying. I am one of those very selfish adults that doesn't like when this new generation has easier and better access to things I wanted when I was that age. The (laughs) only way I got to see anything like this was when I went over to the Midge's house and we raided his dad's fucking Playboy collection, which was (laughs) epic. And dad was an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, And I connoisseur of sorts. (laughs) But the whole thing was just like we we knew we were being bad and we knew like there's a whole like uh, exciting part to even getting access to this. Like every one of us in our age group watched scrambled porn at some point in our oh, life. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. We worked hard to try to see it. You had a raft These box kids or a Victoria's Secret catalog. You had to get creative. Yeah. These kids today, they'd stumble on it by like. They like query an ice cream cone and like the first four <laughs> things that they find at your porn. It's not fair. Like I, I, we did not have this kind of access. So for me, Back I in support our day, Louis- we search boobies on the internet. We got birds. Right, there was no internet. There was no internet. <laughs> let's just get, let's get that. But uh, I, I will, uh, I will say out of pure selfishness, I think that uh, Louisiana is on the right track here. Way to go, Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> Midge, you give a uh, point okay, counterpoint. So, um, yeah, my, my Jane, own, you ignorant slut. My <laughs> only time in Louisiana, uh, I was I was sing, uh, It was it was St. Patrick's Day, and I was standing at a bar, talking to some guy. This is a true story. This actually happened. I'm talking to this guy. That's all we tell and, here. And then he he <laughs> he puts his wallet down on the bar, getting ready to pay for a cocktail. The guy standing next to him grabs the wallet, knees him in the crotch and starts running. I I don't even know what just happened, but I watch, I I see this. And then some other dude who apparently had watched this all happen, tackles him in the middle of the dance floor as he's halfway across the bar on his way to the door. And this all happens in like 20 seconds. And I just think this is why people love New Orleans. This is, this is what people come here for. This is magic. That being said, this is this is way, way at the bottom of uh, Louisiana is like 49th in education. Like, let's give these kids a book first and teach them how to read shit before we start limiting their access to porn, because that's going to give them some motivation. Let's be honest. It's going to inspire them to do more and be better. I I don't mean to. I'm going to be the devil's advocate. (laughs) I'm going to be the anti puritanical on this one. I don't mean to uh, to story top. I mean to story align with what you said. Oh, and you're going to try to top my story. I no, no, I don't mean to. That is <laughs> not what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm supporting your story by a similar story. My first time in New Orleans, I was 16, 17. We were going on a family cruise because a lot of cruises will go out of New Orleans, that port there. And so we stayed like one or two streets off of Bourbon Street. And we had one of those balcony rooms, which is, you know, you're super psyched. You're in the French Quarter. It looks amazing. You've never seen any of this. You hear the music in the distance. And me and my dad are out there. And I look down and I'm like, hey, look, there, you know, you know, there's. And then I literally watched within not even 30 seconds of being out on the balcony, enjoying the Louisiana atmosphere. I watched a 13 to 14 year old kid come up grab this lady's purse right underneath us, stab her twice in the side and run away. (laughs) And I was like, whoa, okay. I I shouldn't have laughed. God, it's God. That's me. I mean, that is, that is what the the side of Louisiana and New Orleans that people aren't expecting when they go visit there, but you know, be careful. That's all I can say. Be careful. I've been there a couple of times. I have great stories. I was in New Orleans in September. I was one block up from Bourbon because Bourbon was too crowded. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was, it was a good sized crowd, but we were in a bar and we were listening to some really, really good blues music. And all of a sudden there, a fight broke out 
in the middle of the dance floor, as you do, and a fucking mm-hmm. horse cop busted right through the door into the middle of Love the dance it. floor and swung his horse around to break up the fight and then just pointed and said, you, the fuck out, you, the fuck out, you, the fuck out. And it was either that or stare down the horse because he was up there, you know, like six feet above everybody else. And there's a fucking horse in the middle of the bar. He's like, That's you tell him I'm coming and yeah. he's coming with me. <laughs> Piss on you, white. <laughs> skin it skin that smoke wagon and see what happens uh, and so i was in the back going i have two guns one for each of you yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's better than being uh lined up in a barn in sonata and i'm taking a knife off you we're not going to talk about that because that was taught <laughs> Article continues. Hair, anus, anus, vulva, genitals, or nipple of the female breast. Yeah, yeah. So websites That's... with content containing at least thirty-three point three percent pornographic material must now implement age verification. The law does not mention how that percentage is calculated. I'm fascinating. I was just going to say content such as pubic hair, anus, vulva, genitals, or nipple of the female breast are just some of the basic materials that are considered harmful to minors. Porn so hub. literally five things that made me not kill myself before I reached high school age. So I'm completely- you say Pornhub, one of the internet's largest online pornography sites, has already enacted an identity verification page before entering its site in Louisiana. Well done, guys. Be very proactive. You know why? It's because they're Canadian. If you happen to go on Pornhub, please use the promotional code Bottle of Brown. <laughs> uh, Pornhub.com slash Brown. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna like what you see. We get some uh we get some attribution for that. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. Just kidding. Or the other thing you can type in is always gets a good one, always gets good results. Uh the law has bipartisan quote. support. Say again. I love this quote. This bill is about protecting children, not limiting adults. <laughs> <laughs> This law is there, bipartisan is there, support. Is there nothing more succinct in terms of defining our freedoms as Americans? We don't want our kids watching porn, but as soon as they as we turn 18, god damn it, I'm beyond that fucker jerking it as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> it was not like a Republican America. win, but a win for children in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Uh, not everyone is a fan of the new act requiring users to provide personal information to access online pornography. People in Louisiana have to use their driver's license to go to Pornhub. This is truly wild, one Twitter user tweeted. So Louisiana just implemented a law where you have to use ID verification to use porn sites. I got out of that fastest state just in time. Another tweet. (laughs) 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 Oh, Oh. I'd have to agree with them. I think you're pushing it too far. Uh, You know, be a, be a good parent and, uh, and good parents have the ability to control what's being searched. So maybe right. the pairing si- segments on your browsers, people. Okay, that uh, wraps that. up the crank file. Let's get to our new segment, Science, Technology, Space. Five, four, three, two, one. Science isn't about why, it's about why not. Droid. Science! Technology. Yes, science. Technology. Space. This one comes to us from Engadget.com. NASA is funding ideas for a Titan seaplane and faster deep space travel. There are also concepts for an observatory swarm and self-growing Mars habitats. Now, uh, Danny is a serious science nerd. And so I like to try and insert some science stuff into the show just as a way to change things up in season three. But this, this one just blew me away. NASA is still willing to fund unusual concepts in its bid to advance space exploration. The agency is handing out $175,000 initial study grants to 14 projects that could be useful for missions in and beyond the solar system. The highlight may be Titan Air, a seaplane from Planet Enterprise's Quinn Morley that could fly both through the nitrogen and methane atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan and sail its oceans. The flying boat would collect methane and complex organic material for study by sucking it in through a porous leading edge. It's named the, this vessel is named your mom. Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) Hey, uh, just, uh, if we can back up a little bit, aren't we still trying to figure out if it's feasible to grow potatoes and human shit on Mars? No, I mean, did you read the book? (laughs) Which book? 
The Martian. We've already, we've already Martian? figured that out. Okay. I did. Send Matt Are we Damon, sure we and Matt Damon's going to grow potatoes. Haven't done in the it Martian. yet. That was my point. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, maybe back off the whole seaplane idea until you know we can make a fucking omelet with a side of hash browns on Mars. <laughs> All right, just me. <laughs> Leon's having none of it. He wants no, I. I support it. I agree. I think, I think that, uh, oh, I, I, I feel like going to a seaplane in any way, shape or form is a step back. I mean, we all figured out very quickly, not great technology. We need to, we need to do something better about that here. I don't know why that would be any different in, uh, celestial planets, but, uh, sure. Well, yeah, a project fine. from UCLA's Arthur Devoyen could speed up missions to the outer edge of the solar system and even interstellar space. His design, shown in the page here, would propel spacecraft by producing a pellet beam of microscopic particles traveling at very high speed using laser blasts. Come on. Laser propulsion of spacecraft. What did what, they what put it on a shark? They need to put on, it on, on a, shark. a shark. Of course, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and okay. with a velociraptor on top. Yeah, yeah. The concept could dramatically shorten the time it takes to explore deep space, where Voyager 1 took 35 years to reach interstellar space. A one-ton spacecraft could reach that in just three years. Mm. Other efforts are sometimes similarly ambitious. MIT's Mary Knapp has proposed a deep space observatory that would use a swarm of thousands of tiny satellites to detect low-frequency radio emissions from the early universe, not to mention the magnetic fields of Earth-like exoplanets. Kong Gri Jin from the University of Nebraska has envisioned self-growing habitat building blocks that could save space on missions to Mars, while Lunar Resources' Peter Carreri has devised pipelines that could shuttle oxygen between moon bases. These are all very early initiatives that aren't guaranteed to lead to real-world tests, let alone missions. However, they illustrate NASA's thinking. The administration is funding the projects now in hopes that at least one will eventually pay off. Even if there's partial success, NASA can make discoveries that aren't practical using existing technology. Innovation, people. So so I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. We, we have a seaplane. Wrap it up. We have people that are developing the ability to, to transport oxygen and other life uh, necessity things between moons and planets. I can't remember. Did we cure cancer? Did we did we figure that one out? I don't think I don't think we did. And one that's have, like one that's like wiping out the planet. No, I don't think we did. No. Oh, okay. I I feel, I feel like we should still continue working on you this. Wanna, okay. You kind of want to go to the government. You kind of want to say, I just gave you a bunch of tax dollars. But no, that's good. <laughs> I, I want I want NASA to you know invest in the future. That's good. That's good because NASA can't solve any of our problems. This one out right after he was done with the Cybertruck. I'm telling <laughs> you, it's just a. This is just a fucking pipe dream that he made up. And he's hey, like, hey. Hey, you, somebody, somebody's going to publish this. I put a I deposit will. on a Cybertruck. I'm going to sell it to Leon. Oh, I'll buy it. I want it. I want a Cybertruck too. I want that. <laughs> we all do. All right, let's you not, can, you let's not on. try to posture. I'll, I'll double, I'll double really, Leon's deposit. Danny, did you really put down a deposit? Yeah. I'll show you. I'll show I, you the confirmation email. I'll buy your cyber truck. I don't have the ability to actually customize any of it yet because I've gotten about 16 emails going, oh, sorry, it's delayed, but we'll get you know as soon as it's available. Yeah, I want it. In 19, it was announced. In 21, I got the first delay email. In 21, I got another delay email. In 22, I got a delay email. In 22, I got a delay email. And I just got my latest delay email last month. Yes, oh. we're going to build them in 23. Sure, Elon. Sure. As soon as you fix Twitter. Well, you, you should have known something was up when he did his big reveal. And he's like, watch, it won't break. Whoops. <laughs> You're fired. I think it's, he's he's very ambitious trying to build a vehicle made out of stainless steel because that's not easy to scale. You're gonna get you're gonna get a, your next email is gonna say that the vehicle's ready in 2026, but you got to go to Mars to have it delivered. It started out at 39.9, and I think the latest estimates are 57. Mm -hmm. So it's that's still it's fair. creeping up there. But you know the spec sheet hasn't changed, and it looks like it's still you can't pretty get a GMC. How much truck it is though? No, I mean you can get a G, you can't even get a GMC like base model these days under 65. No. Like no, if you consider this, if, even if this thing comes up to be like 71,000 and you have that tonneau cover that doubles as a solar panel, like everything about that truck is just phenomenal. I mean, other than it looks yeah. like a 1981 CAD video game, it really is all, all of the spec sheet says this thing is a model S, but a truck. I want yeah. the electric quad that goes in the, in the bed too. I want the both. <laughs> No word on that. That, that might have like, just been a marketing gimmick. Yeah. He was very serious about that. Yep. The thing seats sticks. They don't paint it. It outruns a Porsche 911, and it's got a bed. 
Like, what more do you want? It yeah. looks like uh, something out of the next uh, Star Wars movie that they're going to make. Yeah, yeah I want I'm not a fan of the yoke, but I think the backlash mm-hmm. on some of his other vehicles is the yoke isn't going to be an option. So we'll get back to a regular steering wheel. But other than that, I mean, the, the hubcaps are kind of weird, but the interior looks tits. Everything about it, especially the bed. No. <laughs> We kind of, we, we went off on an Elon tangent, but the dude's brilliant. What are you going to say? Look, you can hate him. He's fucking weird. Anybody that's brilliant is weird. We just know that now. Like you're not on the same wavelength as us. You know, you don't just keep creating things and, and breaking barriers when you're like, Hey, oh, by the way, I'm totally normal. And yeah. I'm just like, you. that's not, that's not how that works. So we need to accept, we need freaks. Like what's his name uh, that just passed away? That was uh, in the in the chair. God, uh, Hawking. This is a, Hawking. Thank you. Just passed away a few years ago. Yeah, but still, was he? Would you? Would you give him the normal card? Would you no. say yeah, you're no. just like everybody else? No, he wasn't. And uh, I think a lot of these people, they're just not normal, and that's yep. okay. Yep. I would say the same on the artist front, right? A lot of people. Oh yeah, that is weird. Like music musicians or painters or whatever. That's artists. They're all freaks. For sure. For sure. sure. And we enjoy the show. So don't don't. Yeah. That wraps up STS. Let's get to another new segment. Let's get on to adulting. How old are you guys? We're not fucking kids anymore. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your pain? Everything hurts. I'm a grown ass man, dog. I pay taxes here, fucker. We're not like you. We're grown ups, motherfucker. When 900 years old, you reach look as good you are not. Hmm? Tonight's adulting Great. comes to us from penmedicine.org. Gut microbes can boost the motivation exercise. Penn Medicine okay. study finds. That's right, people. If you can't get your ass right. off the couch, you got to eat something. It's about damn time my gut microbes did something for me. From Philadelphia. Some species of gut-dwelling bacteria activate nerves in the gut to promote the desire to exercise, according to a study in mice that was led by researchers at the Perelman School of Medicine, University of Pennsylvania. The study was published today in Nature, reveals the gut-to-brain pathway that explains why some bacteria boost exercise performance. In the study, researchers found that differences in running performance within a large group of lab mice were largely attributable to the presence of certain gut bacteria species in higher performing animals. Research traced this effect to small molecules called metabolites that the bacteria produce, metabolites that stimulate sensory nerves in the gut to enhance activity in a motivation controlling brain region during exercise. Ding, 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 ding. What do you think it is, boys? Any guesses? I'm at the edge of my seat. Bran. Bran is what you want to eat. Raisin bran, oat bran, bran muffins, bran. Haven't that we always known that? The, the tracks. Well, we knew Because I don't want to work out at all. I have no desire to work out. Other than the fact that I look at myself in the mirror every day and go, you fat ass, go work <laughs> out. <laughs> but I don't eat bran and that tracks. So I buy it. I eat raisin bran. So I do. You don't. Fucking taste no, you it. don't. I do. Yeah, dude, no, I love don't. raisin bran. Shh, go right now. Go into your cupboard and show me <laughs> oh, you right son now. <laughs> go get the purple box, bitch. I want to see two scoops or you're fucking fired. Ultimately, in a years long process of scientific detective work involving more than a dozen separate laboratories at Penn and elsewhere, the researchers found that two bacteria. Oh, oh, he's got it. it. Slam he dunk it. on you, motherfucker. He has it. I stand corrected. You know I apologize. <laughs> I am you very sorry. Liar. You know what he did? He brought the ball to the hoop, Leon. I, I got owned. Boom. Dunked on now, you, brother. Broke wait, the glass. I do have a I have a follow-up question, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're eating all this bran, why don't you fucking work out? Is that a question for me or the panel? That is that's a question for you, <laughs> Mr. Raisin Bran. <laughs> and your two I scoops. No, I don't work out. <laughs> uh I could see it. Uh the results of your of your how, working out. How dare you? I I eat bran so I don't have to work out. Thank you. <laughs> I just, I just so, my pants ten to fifteen times a day, and then you know all the all the waste escapes. 
Danny, you could read this article, but everybody already knows it's total bullshit. But can go go ahead, keep going. What we just called the bullshit. Uh, Thanks, Doctor Hyder. The Midge eats bran like it's like no tomorrow. Like he loves it, but it's and delicious. It I can't like- imagine. I can't imagine you lifting a weight right now, like <laughs> other than a beer or a drink. <laughs> I lift weight sometimes. What's her name? I don't. I don't know if I have a. Oh, Look. yeah. What is yeah. her name? Three. Four, yeah. Five, six. How many reps you doing? <laughs> mm, mm. Mm. Two pump jump. It's okay. You can be honest. Are you trying to say I look fantastic? Thank you, Leon. Yeah, I, I think I think so. I think that's what we're saying. I'm saying you look old, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm forty. All right, let's I'm a man. I'm, I'm a man. man. Ultimately, in a years long process of scientific detective work involving more than a dozen separate laboratories at Penn and elsewhere, the researchers found that two bacterial species closely tied to better performance, Eubacterium rectale and Coprococcus eutectus, produce metabolites known as fatty acid amides. The latter stimulate receptors called CB1 endocannabinoid receptors on gut embedded like cannabis, nerves, which connect to the brain via the spine. The stimulation of these CB1 receptor studded nerves causes an increase in levels of the neurotransmitter dopamine during exercise in a brain region called the ventral striatum. The striatum is a critical node in the brain's reward and motivation network. The researchers concluded that the extra dopamine in this region during exercise boosts performance by reinforcing the desire to exercise. All I heard was bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. That's all I heard. I got to really go for some in and out right now. None of that made sense. We just proved none of that's true. He eats it. He doesn't want to work out. I don't eat brand. Do you eat brand, Danny? Not enough. You, you actually work out though. Yeah, but I know I'm, that. I mean, I'm I'm not lifting big bitches like Midge is. It, Midge used to be a little fucking tank, man. He used to have like traps that like touched his ears. I remember when he was all buff out, <laughs> like gold. He was, was like that was Jeremy. I had a, I had a short oh, beard. I was somewhat terrible. Were, you were cut for a while. I remember those days. You're like, I'm slamming it. You know, for me, luckily for me, my personality is so awesome. I don't have to look good. But I think like you two, you need to step up your look game. So, all right. You know what they say about the in you know conclusion personality, right? A study in mice undercovers <laughs> gut to brain pathway that increases exercise performance based on two specific bacteria that increase metabolites known as fatty acid amides and the cb1 endocannabinoid receptors which once again proves my theory germans love david hasselhoff <laughs> yes i love it i'm well done good close uh the story the story the finishes the the, uh, the study no reinforces fatty. the idea that the gut is the second brain which i am wholeheartedly onto. if you don't shit you get cancer and you die simple as that listen i will i will here's where i'll jump on that do you either, either you guys take uh, probiotics or anything like that? Uh, I, occasionally, yes. I I thought amazing, I thought I thought there was some bullshit. Yeah, like oh, right, all right, I'm not fucking Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm not going to take your probiotics. But there's some for men over forty. Take some fucking probiotics and see what happens. You feel better. Like shit just fucking flows like it used to when you were 21. Oh yeah. So take it. Dropping dropping a thrice is magical. Yeah, it's nice. So, but you got to take it all the time and it's not a big deal. It's just like, you know, I think a lot of these studies like negate all those things. Like if you're taking probiotics or you're doing things that give you good gut health, which you need when you're over 40 or really over 35, if you're going to be honest with yourself. But uh, the idea is that Bran is the best producer of these metabolites. And so get yourself some raisin bran or a bran muffin or eat more bran. And that's, that's the gist of it. Anyway, that's or steroids. Steroids, of course. Of course. Or steroids. All right. That wraps up adulting. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's get to our final segment, a brand new segment called WTF. Excuse me, what the What the what the f- Hey yo, what the what? Whiskey! You guys ready to get angry? Every day. Every day. This is some bullshit. Normally reserve this moment for Leon, but I wanted to give Leon a break and let's all get angry at this one. This one comes from Reuters. Real news, people. Dan, Walmart- I gotta tell you, hold Go. on, before you say this, Danny, Speak. I, I wanna I wanna I wanna tee this up for the audience. 
we do a little bit of a production meeting before these shows. <laughs> and very rarely do I see Danny get so fired up that he's ready to fucking rip someone's head off. This story really fired him up. I don't think the emotion that's coming through the mic really truly projects what he's feeling about this story. So understand his rage is being tempered while he's delivering it. Go ahead, Danny. I agree. I actually, I actually watched him beat up a Girl Scout over this one. So. Uh, I, it was hard. It was hard to watch. Mitch, it was hard to watch. That was my dragon roar. That, that was my Game of Thrones dragon roar. All right, get this. Walmart wins lawsuit claiming it's fudge mint cookies, lack fudge and mint. This comes from the same company that sells you a fucking ice cream sandwich that doesn't melt. Boom. How are you not outraged? Boom. I can see I'm alone. Fine. Let it out, Danny. We'll Let it out, alone. Danny. I'm, I'm for it. I'm supporting you. Federal judge in Chicago has dismissed a proposed class action lawsuit accusing Walmart of deceiving shoppers by selling fudge mint cookies that lacked fudge and mint. Fuck them. Eugene DeMasso of LaSalle, Illinois, said packaging for the cookies sold under Walmart's great value label. Are they a great value? Misled no. reasonable consumers because the cookies fudge contain no milk fat and it's mint contain no mint. In a decision on Tuesday, U.S. District Judge Mary Rowland said no cases showed the consumers expect fudge to contain milk fat. And DeMasso undercut his argument by asserting that fudge could contain vegetable oils as Walmart's cookies did. Rowland also agreed with Walmart that mint promised a flavor, <laughs> not actual mint. The judge likened the case to lawsuits where courts found that vanilla was not a required ingredient in products that say vanilla. What mattered, she said, was that products tasted like vanilla. Tommaso's lawyer, Spencer Sheehan, who filed many lawsuits over vanilla, said he would review the decision that his client had not decided whether to appeal. Walmart spokesman Randy Hargrove said in an email, we are pleased with the court's ruling and will continue to defend the company against these allegations. <laughs> Litigation against the food and beverage industry has grown in recent years, and the law firm Perkins Coy said 325 proposed class actions were filed in 2021. DeMasso had sued on behalf of consumers in 26 states. The law said Walmart's cookies sold for at least $1.89 for 10 ounces and would have sold for less absent the alleged misleading representations. I mean, DeMasso is doing God's work. Danny, how do you feel about this? I'm, this is, I hate this. Why? This is false advertising 101. Yeah. Why? Let because they should say fudge mint flavor. Truth in advertising, people. This is right. deceptive and wrong. And I'm is, there, is there any more clear evidence that we have walked right off the fat fucking American cliff that we have lawsuits that we're actually taking seriously about there not being milk fat or mint? In the fucking cookies. God damn us. I just joined the terrorists. I'm going to Afghanistan. I'm going to a training camp. Well, the Bob <laughs> Brown podcast is a Pulitzer Prize inspired show. Listen, if they would be honest and say, you know what? We replaced vanilla with bacon fat. I'd be like, I get it. Right. Like bacon <laughs> fat's amazing. Uh, I'm not sure what they replaced it with. So that's where I'm like, I'm, I'm really up in the air in this debate. So check it like, out. Check it out. I want you guys, next time you guys go to the store, because I know you go to the store a lot. Next time you go to the store, I want you to go look for some craft singles. And I want you to see, it doesn't say cheese on it. It says pasteurized cheese product because it's not cheese. Can I, can I be honest with you, though, Danny? If Girl Scout mint cookies, and we all know the mint cookies, I don't have to fucking give I the have actual two name. in my fridge. If, if they were made of baby seal, I wouldn't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care if baby seal was what made the flavor delicious. I'd eat them. So I, I, that's where I struggle on your argument, but at the same time, argument. I support you because, uh, you know, Walmart needs to answer for this. <laughs> they, they need fudge and mint. This is, this is a grave injustice. <laughs> we deserve, we deserve better. I'm American. We have fucking eagles dying of lead poisoning. We need to have well, fudge and mint cookies in our of fucking cookies. And we learned something today. So, you know what? I'd like to. I'd like to just those you listening at home. I just spit whiskey all over my keyboard. Every European who who read this fucking article went, "How do these fucking assholes?" have more money than we do. All they do is sit around eating fucking mint fucking, fucking cookies and going, this doesn't have mint or fuzz. So I'm going to sue these assholes. Oh, this it's is super easy. This is what we're, we're spending our time. This is, this is tying up our fucking this courts. Is, this, is truth advertising. this is a problem. We're being lied to. I, I will answer your question, Mitch, and I'm going to get super political on you here. Well, there was no question in that. 
There was, yeah. that was, that was uh, all stadium. Do you know the difference is uh, Americans work 40 hours a week and nobody else fucking does. Boom. Mm-hmm. Drop your fucking mic. Nobody else does. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a fucking scratch on your hand? Six weeks Actually, off. Actually, um, Americans work 60 hours a week. Yeah, and, we fucking and- never stop working. So yeah, anybody who says we don't work hard and we're lazy, go fuck yourself. We work so much harder than you. Yeah, we're lazy the rest of the time because we just got off a 60 hour a week. Mm-hmm. We work hard to be lazy. It's the weirdest thing. It's so <laughs> weird. We work like I'm going to work another 10 hours just so that I can sit on the couch for an hour. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I, I want to buy this machine that does this thing for me. So I, I'm going to have to be 68 tomorrow so that I can watch six, three hours of succession right after that. Yeah. I find it violates the contract with the consumer. If it says fudge mint, I want it to be fudge mint. If it says fudge mint flavor, at least I know what I'm getting. You, you know what? Purist, Danny Paul. What am I paying for here? All right. Listen, <laughs> listen. Where is my, wait for it, where is my dollar eighty nine for 10 ounces going if it says fudge mint and I can either get fudge or mint? Check Danny, and make, you make a sir. good point. You make a good point. I I, I can't argue that. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think Walmart needs to pay. All of I us. Wanna go, I want to go up to the fresh produce stand and I want it to say strawberries and when I bite into it, it goes, oh, I'm sorry. This is just soy that tastes like strawberries. Like, no, I wanted a strawberry. How dare you? Well, there was nothing legally that requires us to actually put strawberry in something that says strawberry. It's lies. It's all lies. Well, that's why I don't eat fruit. Not helping my argument, sir. Well, all right. All right. <laughs> you should start to take so he, he can find I this bite into a, I bite into a carrot, which I know you do like. And the carrot is not, in fact, carrot. It is marshmallow. But the marshmallow tastes like carrot. So, of course, now it is carrot. Is it not? You, you shut your mouth. You Under never, this you yes, never make it. You don't say something like that. Jimmy. I'll eat a broccoli made out of cotton. And as long as it tastes you're, like broccoli, it's totally fine. No, it is a monster. You're a monster. Don't don't even make that suggestion. My rage knows no bounds. <laughs> Bullshit. Boo Listen. this man, Walmart. Boo. I, su- I, I support your cause. I do. I you know do what? support you know what, your Lan, cause. I'm going to send you a bottle of bourbon flavored bourbon that isn't bourbon. And Listen. let's see where you land. Hey, do I get to do my rant? Do I get to rant or not? Oh, do you want to rant? All right, hold on. Let's, hold on. Let's, like uh, we got time. I don't have anything specific. Do you want me to run, uh, you want me to run Leon's hey, you mode? Have a, you, have a, you have like a... Yeah. The, the Jetsons theme song, right? Me, run mine, <laughs> and I will pass it. I will pass it to Midge. Oh, that's a serious... Uh, I always have a rant. There's something I'm about on a weekly basis. I'm excited. About. This is perfect. All right, let me... Uh, Are you excited that I'm doing it? We're excited you don't have to anymore. No, I have a lots of thing to bitch about. That is easy. That's why Danny put this whole segment together, because he knows... There is not a week that goes by that I don't have something to bitch about for five minutes. Yeah, let me that see was the can, whole running joke. Do this for, all right. So, Leon, you are you are passing the torch for this episode. I'm passing it to Midge because clearly he's more fired up than I am. And I appreciate Here that. Here we go. So far, Danny, I haven't heard a single logical reason. No, no, don't accept this. It's frustrating. And we haven't cured cancer. We have not cured cancer. I don't know the answer. I'm just ranting about it. Midge, the floor is yours. Midge, all right, floor is yours. I appreciate you you passing the torch, there, Leon. All right, I, I read an article this week about uh, British Airways or Air France. I don't know, some fucking European airline <laughs> just ordered like thirty uh, supersonic jets, the next generation supersonic jets. Uh, we have a fighter that's coming out that is unarmed, but it's going to be able to get across the planet in about six hours. Which means we can, you know, pretty much annihilate anybody that we want to. The Jetsons predicted treadmills, the Peloton, streaming, the robot dog, and the sex doll. It was kind of a weirdly clouded episode, but it was there (laughs) if you were paying attention. I want to know, where is my goddamn jetpack? Where is it? Where is my jetpack? How long have we fucking tried to develop this thing? There was one asshole in L.A., Flew on about 5,000 feet, almost hit Southwest six or seven times. He probably should have because they would have taken out an airline that can't get people anywhere on time anyway. I want to know where my fucking jetpack is. We are spending $200 million per fucking F-22. We had an F-35 do a little fucking dance on a runway. 
flip upside down. We've got literally six billion dollars worth of planes that can't fucking go anywhere because we have no idea how that happened in the first place. Where's my goddamn jet pack? In 1986, my parents bought a 1984 Toyota Celica. It got me across town 10 miles to about 20 minutes. I have a 2017 Honda Ridgeline. It takes me 25 minutes to get 10 miles. The only fucking difference is I have Apple CarPlay on that thing with GPS that shows me how much slower I'm getting to that next generation or that, that next destination 10 miles across town 40 years later. Where's my goddamn jetpack? I want to know. I want answers. Let's go, Brandon. I am so proud. I think you just gave Leon a boner. I'm tearing up over here because I tell Jesse was bored or truly inspired. Listen, I'm going to let you rant because I ran all the time and I'm just going to let you go because it's organic. <laughs> it's organic. You just got to let them go. I think what you said was from the heart and I appreciate everything you said. I, I won't. I won't. I have I have reservations with some of the things you said, but that's not what this that's not what this segment's about. This Do you have segment, reservations about me piloting said jetpack or something have else? You, have you ever done the? Uh, I mean, or I'm sure you've seen it, but have you ever done the jetpack like that's connected to those jet skis? It's like you a water jetpack. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's bullshit. That's a horse shit jetpack. What about the jetpack from the no, Super it Bowl? Is, it that's, is. That's a jet ski that's been rammed up your own asshole. That's totally different. I'm that's talking about. I get that. I get that. But five thousand feet straight up, five thousand feet back down, land safely. And listen, then I want to smoke a bowl when I get back home. Listen, Iron Man and, and me are fucking best friends. I agree. I just would ask if you've ever done that. I never done it. Uh, I don't know that I ever would, but I know that you and I, when we were 16 years old, we would go out to fucking Dana Point Harbor and on your shitty ass jet ski and fucking tear up shit in salt water. Hey, my shitty ass jet ski was the only shitty ass jet ski owned by a 16 year old that, you know, which is why you were hanging out with my ass. No, no, it's mostly because you were ugly and I like to be next to ugly guys because it helped me hook up with girls. <laughs> it's so weird that we were thinking the exact same thing on that. Jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the midge and I have history. Well, wow. midge, I think I think you had an excellent load tonight and I appreciate well done, it. Sir. Well done. Thank you for sharing that with us. I uh, I think you nailed it. I, I I thought a lot about it and I was passionate about it. I will I will try to <laughs> I'll try to get angry on other topics. You, f- you feel better, don't you? <laughs> no, I do. It's it's, it's, been my th- it's it's nice to have an audience to scream at instead of my my you know formerly terrified dog. It's been my therapy for a long time, and I really appreciate Danny allowing me the time. To air my grievances. That's our show. You can email us at bottleofbrown at gmail.com. Give us a phone call, 602 529 4562. Leave a message for Danny, Leah, and Mr. Jones or any of our special guests. We want to hear from you. Give us ideas for content or refute anything we say on the show. If you like our show, please, please put sugar on top. Like, follow, subscribe, share with a friend. We're on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Share a quiet drink with us next episode. Same brown time, same brown channel. Bottle of brown. Com. Thanks for joining us, Midge. Hey, thanks, Chad. This place is dead anyway, man. <laughs>